If you're experiencing belly pain, nausea, diarrhea, or constipation, could it be diverticulitis? Well, let's find out. I know this started out like a commercial, but I promise you it's not a commercial. This is purely educational. Today, we are talking about a common condition that affects many people in their 30s and above, especially after the age of 40. It's called diverticulosis, and it's more serious form, diverticulitis. Maybe you've experienced this, you know, suspecting you have it or know someone who does. I'm here to make these conditions clearer for you, including what they are, their symptoms, what causes them, and ways to handle or avoid them. Let's get started. This is MedScience Simplified. I'm Dr. Ziggy. I am a board-certified radiologist. Diverticular are small bulging pouches that can form in the lining of your digestive tract. It most commonly happens in the lower part of the large intestine or colon. It is called diverticulosis. They can sometimes become inflamed or infected, leading to diverticulitis. In medicine, when things end with itis, it usually means inflammation. For instance, inflammation of the appendix is called appendicitis. Inflammation of the pancreas is called pancreatitis, and so on. Diverticulosis is something I often notice as a radiologist, especially when patients have CT scans for other reasons. They come in, we do a CT scan, and there it is, diverticulosis, without causing any problems. It's not the reason they came in, into clinic or the emergency room. It's just something was spot by chance. In medicine, this is called an incidental finding. Right then, it might not be causing any issues, but it's worth keeping an eye on because it can lead to problems down the road. So how do you know if you have diverticulitis? The signs to watch out for are usually constant pain in the lower left side of your belly, nausea, vomiting, fever, and a change in your bowel habits like constipation and diarrhea. If you're having these symptoms, especially constant unexplained abdominal pain, it is important to see a doctor. Why do these pouches on your intestine form in the first place? It usually happens when weak spots in the intestine, especially the colon, gives way under pressure, creating this little pocket called diverticulosis. If a pocket tears, inflammation and infection can potentially set in, leading to diverticulitis. There are some factors that can increase your risk of diverticulosis and potentially diverticulitis. They include aging, which is something that we can't really help. But other factors we can influence include obesity, smoking, lack of exercise, a diet high in animal fats and low in fiber, and certain medications like steroid and some pain uh, medications as well. Complications of diverticulitis. About 25% of people who have diverticulitis will develop complications. These complications include abscess formation, which happens when pus collects in the inflamed pouch, obstruction of your large intestine as a result of inflammation and scar tissue formation, an abnormal connection between the inflamed intestine and other parts of the intestine or other structures around the inflamed intestine. This is called fistula formation. It is important to know that recurrent diverticulitis, especially if it happens in the same location over and over, of course, separated by time, increases your risk for colon cancer in that location. Okay, here's some good news. There are ways to prevent you from developing diverticulosis, or if you already have diverticulosis, preventing it from progressing to diverticulitis. They include regular exercising, high fiber diets full of fresh fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, staying hydrated, avoiding or quitting smoking if you do. All these can reduce your risk for diverticulosis and diverticulitis. Smoking cigarettes is a habit that harms not just your lungs, but almost every organ in your body. Quitting smoking or smoking cessation has become a common message in a lot of my videos. So I'm planning to create another video specifically about smoking cessation or quitting. But don't worry, it wouldn't be only about scare tactics or showing you images of damaged lungs. Instead, I want to make it as positive and supportive as possible, offering you practical steps to help you overcome these habits. Treatment for diverticulitis. If you develop symptoms for diverticulitis and believe you may have it, 
It is important to consult a healthcare professional. Many mild cases can effectively be managed with rest, diet changes, and antibiotics. More severe cases might require surgery, but that's very uncommon. There you have it. A brief overview of diverticulosis and its more serious form, diverticulitis. By taking care of your digestive health and making smart lifestyle choices, you can help prevent diverticulitis and live a healthier, more comfortable life. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informational or helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more health tips. If you have additional questions, please drop them in the comment section. Let's talk. I'll see you in the next video.